Here's the type of problem you'll be asked to solve involving acid-base reactions in a pKase. For the following acid-base reaction, C6H5OH plus NaOCH3, draw products if the reaction will proceed to completion as written, or write NR, no reaction, if the reaction will not proceed as written. Okay, how do we crack this problem? First thing we have to do is of the two reactants that are given, you need to figure out which one is the acid and which one is the base and label them accordingly. Okay, in most cases it will be fairly obvious, or at least one of them will be fairly obvious, because as we've discussed, there are some molecules called amphoteric compounds that are capable of acting as either an acid or a base. Some rules of thumb. If it has a positive charge, it's going to be the acid. If it has a negative charge, it will almost always be the base. There are very occasionally examples of the conjugate base of a diprotic acid, such as HSO4 minus HCO3 minus um, HPO4 minus, that are capable of losing another proton. So they are capable of being an acid, even though they have a negative charge. But more often than not, some, if it has a negative charge, at least try to do the problem such that the, the ion with the negative charge is the base. And then the third rule of thumb is anytime you see Na, it's always going to be Na plus and it's going to be a spectator ion. Okay, so when you see something with Na in it, like NaOCH3, break that up into ions. Okay, so you don't see anything with a charge on it in the two reactants that are given to you, but if you take the NaOCH3, break it up into Na plus OCH3 minus, recognizing that Na plus is a spectator ion, you now suddenly see that OCH3 minus is actually the active reactant. Okay, so it's going to be the base, and therefore C6H5OH will have to be the acid. Okay, note that C6H5OH is another word for phenol, and it is an alcohol. It's, as, as you can see from looking at the pKa table, it's actually a more acidic alcohol than a traditional alcohol like ethanol, but it is a neutral compound. Just because you see OH on this molecule, you should not be thinking base. ROH, an alcohol, is not the same as OH minus. If you see OH minus with nothing else on it, yeah, then it's a base. In fact, even if you see RO minus with nothing else on it, with that minus charge on the oxygen, it's a base. But if you see ROH, it's going to be a neutral alcohol. And in some cases, you've seen OHs that are even more acidic because RCOOH is a carboxylic acid. Okay, so keep that in mind. Then, as we said previously, if one of the reactions is amphoteric, you need to look carefully at both reactants in order to determine which, whether the amphoteric reactant is functioning as the acid or as the base. Okay, step two. We've got what we have so far done on this problem at the top of the screen. To get potential products, remove the acidic hydrogen from the acid, and put it on the base. This will generate the conjugate base of the acid and the conjugate acid of the base. Okay, so we removed the H from our acid. We've turned C6H5OH into C6H5O minus, and we've taken that hydrogen and put it on the OCH3 minus to generate CH3OH, which is the conjugate acid. The Na plus just appears on both sides of the equation. It is a spectator ion. Okay, now that you have an acid on each side, you go look at the pKa table, and I've reproduced the relevant portion of the pKa table on this slide. Write the pKa under the acid on each side of the equilibrium expression. The pKa table is defined for acids. Yes, you can use it indirectly, 
to measure the strength of bases by measuring the pKa of the conjugate acid. Okay, so C6H5OH on your pKa table, it's got a pKa of 9.9 .9, and CH3OH, no, it's not on the pKa table. So what do you do? What do you do if one of them's not there? Well, what are on the pKa table are H2O and CH3CH2OH, and you see that both of those, at least rounded to the nearest whole number, have a pKa of 16. Therefore, you can safely assume that the pKa of methanol is also 16. All right, step four. If the weaker acid, higher pKa, is on the right side, the equilibrium will favor products. If the weaker acid, higher pKa, is on the left side, the equilibrium will favor reactants, which is another way of saying no reaction will take place. Okay, so in this case, these are going to be the products and a reaction will take place because we are generating the weaker acid and the weaker base on the right side. Now the last question we have to answer is, will this reaction go to completion? And in order to do that, you have to evaluate the pKa difference between the two acids. Now, my rule of thumb, some people may disagree with me, but my rule of thumb is if you have a pKa difference of at least three pKa units, we will conclude that the reaction has gone to completion. Because what does that mean? If you have a pKa difference of three, that means at equilibrium, you have an equilibrium constant of 1,000 and a 999 to one ratio of products to react. That's saying it's 99.9% .9 product and 0.1% reactants. And based on most techniques that we use to assay the completion of reactions, that's about the smallest amount of starting material that you could reasonably see. Okay, so rule of thumb, three pKa units means that the reaction has gone to completion, which is true in this case. 16 minus 9.9 .9 is 6 pKa.